You are the conduit between the spiritual realms and the physical realms. You are the convergence of science and spirituality. The choice is up to each of us, but the answer is yours and yours alone. Will you choose fear or will you choose love? That is the only question. So it's very important to note that the things that we look at in the Bible as being metaphorical are actually real stories. They are real pieces of information. And this includes the idea of Jesus arriving. So the actual group that Jesus came to oppose then takes over his message and then, as of 325 AD, creates the New Testament where they very selectively manicured Jesus' message to remove the teachings that they thought were anathema to their agenda. So apparently, Jesus spoke to one of the original apostles about reincarnation. This apostle then said reincarnation is the great secret teaching of Jesus. By removing reincarnation from Christianity, the Roman elite were able to create an airtight Trinitarian doctrine, where the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and there's nothing else. The Holy Spirit becomes this sort of mystical thing that is not feminine. You have God the Father, which is masculine, God the Son, which is masculine, and the Holy Spirit, which is not gendered. Therefore, the role of the feminine is removed from the Trinity. And this is an important point. The suppression of the feminine by the patriarchy to suppress the female spirituality and the feminine perspective that would occur in governance and law and all aspects of society. And one of the huge parts of awakening is, you know, really understanding, you know, feminine energy. And I think, you know, really what's being rebalanced or, or, or coming to light for people is the end of patriarchy and the understanding of things like sacred union. It's not about a rebalancing because something that the men did wrong. It, it has to do with overthrowing a system of control that is impacted and infected everyone. My name is Sasha Stone. I'm, uh, I think, popularly um, known for having founded the New Earth Nation, which is a, a sovereign movement of conscious people, living men and women of the living soil, so to speak. And well, the, the New Earth uh, Project uh, and the New Earth Blueprint, which is an ongoing um, evolutionary process, is emerging uh, in, di in direct proportion to the degree to which human beings are fed up and pissed off with the status quo. Um, so as you can imagine, it's a, it's a, um, a revolution of a political consequence, of social consequence, um, of civilizational consequence. It's underway. It's not possible to know yet quite where the die lands. But the point is, um, we are aggregating uh, conscious, sovereign people around the world in multiple parts of the world who want to step outside of the fiction and begin to engage um, their noble expression as living men and women of the living soil. There is no better way to put it than that because that is foundationally what the New Earth Project is seeking to do, is to restore the organic and the living from the death cult, the blood economy, the fiction of what we've known for the last 8,000 years. What occurs is that each individual on this planet finds themselves more and more connected to every other human. And all of a sudden, we start approaching our problems from completely different angles and seeing solutions that were there all along. We begin to no longer have war and strife within our civilization. We begin to work together and solve all of the problems that have plagued us for so many thousands of years. So therefore, spirits need a body, a good spirit, the Holy Spirit needs a body to work through. But these negative spirits, they need bodies to work through also. So many times that, that thought that comes into your mind, that's not really your thought. 
And if you dwell on that thought, it's going to take you down a negative road. What do you mean by that, Leon? I mean that you were minding your own business. You were having a, a good afternoon. And then all of a sudden, this thought came in. And then that thought triggered an emotion. And, and then that black dog, that cloud of depression came in and took over you the rest of the day. We're bombarded with negativity all day long. It's like a giant spiritual galactic chess match. When these hits come, you got to learn how to counter it. So how do you learn that? You learn that through the strategic art of prayer. You learn that through the strategic art of meditating and having certain words that you'll say to combat that feeling, that emotion, as soon as it comes upon you. That's part of becoming a master. You're going to master those thoughts. You're going to master those emotions. You're going to discipline yourself, your words, and your actions. So we are now in this war that is predicted in the Bible between good and evil. And the negative agenda cannot survive as we go through the solar flash. They can only continue to do these nefarious things up until the point this happens at which time everything changes. I was also told that at the end of every age, there is also a great revealing or apocalypse that occurs that reveals all of the secrets that have been hidden from humanity and is a part of the uh, disclosure and ascension process. This so-called apocalypse is actually not gloom and doom. It's a rebirth. It's a rebooting. It's the beginning of a brand new age, a brand new dispensation. And after it occurs, truly there will be more peace on earth. Truly there will be more goodwill toward man and to one another. Truly there will be a whole new beginning. Actually, it's something to look forward to. The expanding electromagnetic field coming from the sun is going to interact with the consciousness of humanity. What occurs is an ascension event. No matter what your belief system is, you don't need any new religions. All you have to do is apply yourself and become the best of what your religion entails. The idea being, though, that at the end of the cycle, we have the opportunity to escape reincarnation. We don't have to keep coming back as a human being. We can evolve to the next level. Shown was that other ET civilizations in our local stellar neighborhood who they referred to as our cosmic cousins descended on the planet and it looked like stars falling from the sky there were so many craft coming and they came to render aid to all of humanity after the fall of the technological civilization what i'm told by these beings is that we will get the experience that we need the experience that will expand our consciousness and help us evolve in the most beneficial way. If we want to avoid a major cataclysm, what we can do is start to develop our consciousness now. We can put more and more work into expanding our consciousness and becoming more connected with the people around us. And if we do so, the interaction between our consciousness and the sun may give us a gentler experience. My name is Allison Coe. I'm a hypnotherapist outside of Portland, Oregon. There are some really interesting trends that move them their way through these sessions that I have. And I've been doing this for years. And at first I thought these trends were just supposed to be looked at individually. And then I decided to look at them as being stacked on top of each other to prepare us, to get us a higher perspective on what's going on. So let's look at those trends really quick. Trend one. There is an event or solar flash that will happen to this earth to raise the frequency and vibration of the planet and all beings on it. How are we being prepared for it? Trend two, smaller waves of energy are coming to the earth to slowly raise us up. And as they do so, more and more people are awakening. Their belief systems are shattering. Anything that's holding them back is kind of crumbling. Their relationships are changing. They are raising their frequency and vibration to match this event that will happen. Trend three, there are new Earth or Earth-like planets, higher density planets that are being prepared for humans to go and, and eventually move to. And people are seeing these planets in their dreams or in their meditations or in their hypnosis sessions. 
trend four. There are ships gathering all around the Earth from all over the galaxy or universe or multiverse. There are ships here. People are seeing them. People are connecting to them. Trend five. There are higher aspects of you that are connecting to you. There are ETs and higher density versions of you that are trying to give you information and speak with you and, and connect with you to help raise the frequency and vibration of you and the earth. We might then ask, why are all these sessions happening? Why are all these people all over the world who are disconnected, who aren't, who aren't connected in any way, shape or form, why are they getting all of these messages that have this similar trend to them? Is it some sort of indication that there, there's this craziness moving through the world? Are they all warped in some way? Or are we all being prepared for something big that's going to happen to this earth? When we combine all this information together, what we see is that the ETs that are here now are predominantly benevolent. They would be angelic as we think of them. They are keenly interested in human spiritual evolution. We have a much smaller number of ETs that are evil. They would correspond with the demons that we see in various religious scriptures. Their goal is to try to take over the planet and dominate the planet. It does not appear in any way that they will succeed. It does appear that we are on an ascension timeline, that many more people will understand that by simply following the most basic principles of being a good person, service to others, being loving, being forgiving, taking time to be patient, and learning to love yourself as well as being loving to others. That's also a very important point, self-forgiveness self-acceptance. In forgiveness lies the stoppage of the wheel of karma. This is a core law of one quote. By being forgiving, by practicing forgiveness, you discharge the karma that would keep you reincarnating. You learn what you need to know from this earth school. There's something in your body and your mind and your spirit, because they all work together, that wants you to heal and be a whole person again. And I believe that it will set up the circumstances and the synchronicities in your life to guide you to exactly what you want uh, or exactly what you need to look at to heal. The body wants to be whole. It wants the whole energy field and the energy flow through the aura and the human body to be smooth and flowing. It doesn't want to be slamming up against these blocks in your body or in your consciousness. And it will keep working away at those blocks one way or another until you can find the way to heal so that energy can flow smooth again and then you can be more seamlessly connected to the whole of the universe. If you really want to heal and you're willing to go wherever you need to go to heal, the universe will set up the synchronicities that will guide you to what you need to find out about yourself so that you can heal. My dear ones, this is not gloom and doom. This is not the end of the world. Ascension is the start of a new age. You are a son or a daughter of God Most High. It's who you are, it's what you are. The great spirit, the great source, the Alpha and the Omega. You are the son and the daughter of the Alpha Omega. If we were to unify, if we were to get over the fear and start living with hope and living with positivity, they wouldn't be able to feed off our negative energy anymore. Thus, I feel the question one should ask, would be, how can I individually be prepared? What you have to do is believe in yourself and your healing and your light and your vibration. That's all the preparation you need at this point. You have to start being whole. Our bodies are made up of these trillions of atoms that are quantumly entangled, not only to one another, but to everyone else. So in this ascension window, we're actually lifting the veil between life and death because we've gone through enough of these cycles that the, the polarity or the duality between life and death is beginning to thin. Numerous religions and a variety of cultures have prophesied that this event is coming. It's not a matter of if, but when. Contact is happening now, and we have to get ready for the mass event that's coming still, which is happening soon. The main message from the ZTs 
are for us to become more spiritual and to prepare ourselves for this coming event. So this big change is coming, but everyone's got a piece in this and no one's more important than anyone else. We're all in the same wavelength here at the most important time in the universe right now. I don't care what religion you are, what color you are, what culture, it doesn't matter. Uh, that zero point that we want to get to is right here. And when you connect with this, everything's connected. We need to reconnect with what's ethical. How, how do we live as a civilization ethically and morally with all the new technology that we have, that we're developing, and that we will develop in the future? And that's what we all have to do in order to be happy, be joyful, to be in the moment. You see, prayer can change some things, but some prophecies cannot be changed. The information that we have been holding back, or at least survived throughout the ages, has now has to be put out there. I'm offering teachings that's 20,000 years old, and all I need, I don't need money, just people to listen. Can we retrain ourselves and even teach the next generation the value of being of service to others? To honor Mother Earth, to honor our animals, to honor one another, to respect the sovereign dignity of each individual? So it is very important to remember that these spiritual forces that exist on Earth are real, that the different teachers from different religious backgrounds did come in with a message. There is a consistency in this. It is the angelic agenda. It is to teach us the importance of love, forgiveness, compassion, long-suffering, patience, understanding. And once we embrace these principles and we live by these principles, we are bringing ourselves into vibrational accordance with this higher truth. It is a very exciting future, and it is a future that I am willing to fight for and that I spend every day of my life getting us ready for. That is the mission, that is the objective, that is the ascension, and that is the cosmic secret. You are the conduit between the spiritual realms and the physical realms. You are the convergence of science and spirituality. The choice is up to each of us, but the answer is yours and yours alone. Will you choose fear or will you choose love? That is the only question.